Hey guys, Mitch here. Um, so this video is going to be on getting started with SteamVR. Uh, so I got my bike here and we're ready to go. So first thing you want to do is make sure that the plugin is enabled. So if I go into editor or edit, sorry, plugins, uh, virtual reality, and down the bottom we got SteamVR. I just want to make sure that's ticked. Cool. Um, so first things first, I just want to talk a little about the tracking space. So I said we have our room here. We get our two base stations in the corners, and we have our um, tracking space, say, is this inner cube here, it's a little bit offset from the walls. The um, center position for all this will be in the center of our um, play space, on the ground, and so that's our zero, zero, zero. And why this is important is um, the offset for both our headset, our little headset, and our controllers will all be relative to this uh, zero, zero, 0 position. And now we can just go straight into it. So I'm just going to create a blueprint class of type pawn and name it uh, Steam VR Pawn. Cool. And I'm going to go into here. So right off the bat, there are a few things that you need to be aware of when working with the Vive. So by default, UE4 will set the base eye height to 64. And what this will do is to have an offset for the camera at the initial position. So with the Vive, when we have a 0, 0, 0 here, it actually adds a 64 unit offset from this position, meaning that whenever we place our player in the game, it actually be offset 64 units up, up above the floor, which is not what we want. So to counteract that, all you need to do is set this base eye height to 0. Now this is, uh, this is only um, important when you don't have a camera component, because um, if we chuck in a camera component, then this will actually override this uh, value here, and our root will now be the um, parent of this camera component. So, as in 4.11, when you have a camera, um, it'll have a root, and all the offset from the HMD will be relative to its parent, which is okay in the case of the Vive, but say if you have a Rift, and you generally make another scene component as the root of the camera and then offset this. Um, we'll just be working with the Vive, so I can just delete that. Cool. Uh, there are a couple of other components that are useful with SteamVR. So we got the uh, SteamVR Chaperone, which will give you access to the bounds of your play space. So there are a couple of events associated with that, um, on leave bounds and on return. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory. If you want to have something where when the player leaves the bounds, you warn them or something like that, you can do that with these events. Uh, there's one more thing that you do with the Chaperone component. And if I just grab that out, we can get its bounds, which will give us an array of uh, vectors relative to the 0, 0, 0 position of the SteamVR. Um, and so currently in 4.11 Preview 8, this isn't working, so I'm not going to demonstrate it, but you can do pretty cool things where you can like scale the um, game dynamically to fit a player's play space. Yeah. And so the next thing, I'm just going to go and delete these just so I don't have to deal with it. Um, the next thing I'm just going to go through are the couple of the functions that SteamVR gives us. So if I go to SteamVR in the uh, Blueprint menu, uh, you'll see we have under this sub-menu, you have Get Hand Position and Orientation, Tracked Device Position and Orientation, and Valid Tracking IDs. So I'm just going to grab all three of them, and I'll just go through them individually. Cool. And cool. So uh, first thing, I'm just going to go with this valid tracked devices IDs. So um, as you'll see, there's the controllers, tracking reference, and other and invalid. You can actually hover over these and I'll tell you what they are, but I'll just go through it. So controller, pretty self-explanatory. You've got your two Vive controllers, the two ones. Um, the uh, tracking reference will be your uh, camera or your base stations in the case of the Vive. So just to demonstrate these, I'm just going to grab my tick, and I'm just going to uh, debug, draw a box, and this is going to be uh, 50 units by 50 units by 50. And then, so I'm just going to do a loop through our tracking IDs, and I'm going to grab it. And for each of them, I'm going to use our node here, the get track device position and orientation. And this is pretty easy, it just takes in an ID and give you the position and orientation of that device. So I grab the array element and chuck it into our center of our box and the rotation. 
and those two are going to be, oh, I should make that a more bright uh, reddish pinkish color just so we can see it um, and so now we're getting our tracking, tracking reference so this should uh, get our base stations so if I just uh, back out of there chuck in our steam VR port one and uh, I'm just going to zero out these components actually and then make sure all the as player zero is set to true and then one other thing I'm just going to make sure my anti-aliasing is off just so I can see the um, debug lines a bit easier for you guys so if I hit play and then I look around with my uh, Steam VR headset or Vive basically, you'll see there is my base station 1 and over in the other corner my base station 2. Obviously that's a lot bigger just because I choose, chose my extents arbitrarily but yeah it's pretty neat to see them both in the environment. So the next thing we can do is grab our controllers as well. So if I change this device type to controller and then hit play again and as you can see we can see our controllers here got the orientation and position which is pretty cool now there's one thing to note about this and also this helper function that I'm going to mention in a sec so there is this hand position and orientation helper function which will basically do the same as our get valid track device IDs controller but um, we can specifically ask for the left or the right hand uh, which is pretty cool so um, I can do that and then I'll just leave it at this, this will be fine. So there's a couple of things to know about this, is that this doesn't have our, um, our late update. Um, so the controllers in UE4 will have a late update, which will, at the end of the frame will update it to the la very la latest position. So I can demonstrate that actually pretty easily. So if we grab our motion controller component, which is May, the main way you'll be dealing with motion controllers actually we don't really use these helper functions very much so if I grab motion controller you can see the hand index we have so then we have our left hand or right hand and so we also have uh, the player index which is to distinguish between uh, players in the same track space uh, you won't likely use that too much uh, but here we have disable low latency update which um, I can actually visual visualize that pretty well so if I just chuck a sphere component and just put out my motion controller. I'm going to scale it down to at least 0.1 so it's small enough. And then I'm going to grab this extent and maybe scale this down to like 25, just half what we had before because it's a little bit big. And you'll notice if I hit play now and use my uh, Vive once, we have the sphere in the middle and we have this box and the sphere will actually uh, update at a quicker rate, or not quicker rate, but it'll have that low latency um, update. So it can leave the box behind a little bit. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's really noticeable in VR. And so um, I always suggest just leaving this off in the default value. So the next thing we want to do is um, get inputs from our motion controllers. And those are uh, handled through generic uh, gamepad, gamepad inputs. So if I go uh, motion controller, we'll see we have these uh, gamepad events for both our left motion controller and our right. So you're looking at me like, oh, there's a lot of events here. I have no idea what any of those do. Um, lucky I've built a map because it's not exactly self-explanatory. So if I go here and just show you this, there we go. So um, I just went ahead and tested all the buttons and uh, tried to see exactly what they mapped to on the Vive controllers. Um, this is just a consequence of UE4 having a generic motion controller interface where um, it has to uh, accommodate for the buttons of every single motion controller. So there's a little bit of bloat there. Uh, so as you can see, the menu button is actually the shoulder button. So if I just go back here, and, this will, you'll, and you'll see how this is kind of a little bit weird, but if you use that guide, it's pretty easy. So if I go uh, motion controller and we grab like the left shoulder, and when this is pressed, it is actually the uh, menu button on the Vive. So a little things like that are a little bit weird. Um, but so the tracks pad, the trackpad up, so this up uh, quadrant here, will be the um, 
base button one. So if I go back and go motion controller again, and we just grab the left face button one. This corresponds to this quadrant here. And it's similar to face button two, three, and four. Um, the system button, which brings up the Steam VR overlay. Um, actually, we can't actually hook into that just because uh, the overlay is something that's uh, Steam VR white. And then what else do we have? We have the uh, grip button here. This is grip one. There's also, if we look here, go back, motion controller. There's also a uh, grip one axis and a grip two and grip two axis. These uh, grip one axis that doesn't do anything because the grips on the Vive don't have an axis value. They're just uh, Boolean yes or no's. And the grip two, there is no grip two on the Vive. So this uh, does nothing. So if we look back here as well, we got the trigger and the trigger axis. This that actually corresponds perfectly, so that's good. So motion okay. controller. We got our trigger and trigger axis, and that works perfectly fine. And then we also have our uh, press anywhere on the touchpad, and so I just trackpad press here, and that's actually if I go motion controller, and actually co corresponds to our thumbstick. Now these thumbstick down, left, right, up, they do nothing, they don't work either. Um, but yeah, this thumbstick is trackpad press anywhere. So yeah, those are the inputs. Um, I'll put this uh, image in the description just so you can have it um, for reference. There's, uh, oh, one more thing actually. This uh, thumbstick X and thumbstick Y corresponds to the position you're touching on the touchpad. So if I go back here, and I just get a motion controller, Again, we have, um, we can grab our values, which will be, or even our events, so thumbstick X, and then controller, and thumbstick Y, and those will be our X and our Y coordinate that our thumb is touching this trackpad. Um, so negative one to one, and negative one to one. And then this is a circle with a radius of one unit. So um, you can do some cool things where um, you can detect quadrants and stuff if you don't like these um, up, down, left, right quadrants. But yeah, um, those are the inputs for the Vive. Again, that picture will be in the description. As for anything else that is uh, Vive specific, I can't really think of anything. If you have anything that you want me to cover, uh, just ask me in the comments. Um, but yeah, for any other VR stuff in UE4, just check out my other videos. Um, they cover. They should work uh, both on the Rift and the Vive, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah. If anything, any comments, suggestions, check them in the comments. Thanks for watching.